Hi, I'm James. And I'm Anthony. And this is Words and Numbers. So, so this week, Ant, we're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite things, vice. Vice. What you got, James? Well, I mean, look, across the country, you've got a couple of countervailing trends. On the one hand, as we all know, we've got uh, the legalization of marijuana sweeping forward at, at pretty good speed. I think we've got another 14 states looking at it this election cycle. Yep, coming Pennsylvania up. among them. On the other hand, we've got um, a, a very strange anti-pornography sort of regime, for lack of a better, I mean, what I don't even know what to call it, anti-pornography measures working their way through Utah, my home state where I sit right now, but also in South Dakota and Virginia. So that's a movement gaining some steam. And what you find is that the uh, there are a group of people in these states who find something to be rather repugnant. They just don't care for it. They think, for, for lack of a better term, that it's icky. And <laughs> right. they're going to impose their values on the rest of the people in the state given half a chance. So, you know, on the one hand, we've got this increasing freedom in terms of uh, what a person might smoke, as long as it's marijuana, right. which is treated better than tobacco for reasons all right, of a sudden right. that I don't quite understand. And uh, on the one hand, and, and anti-porn measures on the other, which would have you understand that there are things that the people in government don't want you watching in the privacy of your own home. Yeah, and I think it's important to underline here when, when we when we're talking about vice, we we mean things that that people will call victimless crimes. That is, um, you know, I decide to take drugs for myself. I'm not harming anybody else, right? Um, put aside things like uh, ancillary things. I break into your house to steal your money so that I can buy my drugs. Now, clearly, that's a crime, and that's something that, that the government should be concerned about. But by taking the drugs myself, this is not a, this is not a crime or the pornography or whatever it is. It, it's me making decisions for me. Right. I think reasonable people agree almost wholesale that in order for something to legitimately be a crime, you're, you're going to have to locate a victim. And right. the, the nanny staters, they would have you believe that all of society is indeed the victim here. And that's the only way they can sell it. Yeah, and this is interesting because I, I've, I've often wondered about this. I think it boils down to an inability to to appreciate that people have different preferences, right? So if I'm somebody who says, yeah, I, I think marijuana is bad, it should be made illegal. Part of what's driving that is the fact that it just doesn't occur to me that anybody would would enjoy it. Or if you do appear to enjoy it, right. it must be because, you know, it's gotten hold of you and, and you're now addicted or something. Right. But deep down inside, what these people are saying is, I don't like this, therefore you shouldn't be able to do it. And that's the very definition of tyranny. Right. right. When one person would seek to impose his will on everyone else just because he said so. And, and whether it's it's drugs or pornography or, or even sugary drinks, as you're seeing in some cities, right? Whatever it is that the government, where, when the government steps in and tells you how you're going to behave toward yourself, we're no longer a, a nation of free people. We're now a nation of pets that are overseen by some master who knows better for us what's good for us than we do. And you will know who the master is because it's the person who says, won't someone think of the children? This is the this is the argument that, that tugs at the heartstrings and you say, well, we need to do something because if it saves just one child, absolutely positively we should care about the children. But we also have to be aware on the other side of, of the ramifications of what we do. For example... Look at the marijuana laws, right? So we say, all right, we're going we're to make marijuana illegal and, and let's suppose we're going to do it for the children so that children don't have parents who are drugged out. What's the ramification? The ramification is that we destroy families by taking people who are using drugs, some of whom might, you know, actually be irresponsible parents, but some of whom are very responsible parents. They happen to use drugs. We catch them, we throw them in jail, and we destroy the family. So in fact, in a sense, the state is right. Doing drug, drugs will destroy lives. It will destroy lives because if you're caught with them, the state will destroy you. Well, I mean, the simple fact of the matter is, is that we're free moral agents. And as long as that's true, then we have to be permitted. I mean, think about the language I'm using here. We have to be permitted by our government. I'm, I'm almost using the language of a supplicant, right? If you're a free human being, you don't have to beg permission of your government for anything. As long as you don't hurt anyone else, you're free to do as you will. Now, those who would control you would have you understand 
that you have to be controlled because all of society is being harmed. But that they only say this because they can't locate a victim. They can't. They can't because there isn't one. And as long as there is no victim, there is no crime. And if there is no crime, government should take the day off. So, what, all right, so what's the answer here? Because a, a reasonable person would also say, all right, fine. Suppose we did away with all, all you know, victimless crime laws. There are going to be people who fall through the cracks, right? There are going to be people who get access to drugs who might not otherwise have had access to them. And, you know, it's going to ruin their lives or, or, or lives of people around them. How, how do you respond to that? I respond to that by saying the same thing that any rational person person should say. People ruin their lives in all num in, in any number of ways, right? Uh, people eat too much, they jog too much, right? They do anything too much. It's not up to government to save human beings from themselves. It's up to government to umpire the system to make sure that we don't harm one another. And as long as that's being facilitated, government has done its job. If people happen to ruin their lives with the choices they have made, well, those are the choices they have made. And there's no way to save people from themselves without undermining the freedom that makes life worth living for the rest of us. And that's really the beginning and the end of it. So check out the links below because we've written a couple of things on this and I'm, I'm sure they're going to be down there. Um, let us know whether you agree or disagree, and we'll catch you next week. See you next week, James. Bye, Ant.